Meet the Nash twins, Noah and Nate. See, since birth, these two were nearly inseparable. They did homework together, played games together, almost everything. The almost came when it came to football. See, both brothers knew from a young age they wanted to be quarterbacks, and neither would sacrifice their dream just to play with the other. See, even though Noah and Nate had two different styles of play, they were both some of the best QBs in the state of Oklahoma ever since they were six years old. This series is to follow them as they come up through college and hopefully eventually the NFL. Now Noah, he's a 6 foot 1, 210 pound athlete at the QB position, and the athlete is in all caps. He has blazing speed for someone to be at that position, but his accuracy and ability to work inside the pocket were big question marks in his game. His pro comparisons out of high school were Justin Fields and Lamar Jackson. A lot of schools offer him to play receiver, including even his brothers, but Noah wanted to prove the doubters wrong as his dream has always been to be an NFL QB, the same as his brother. So with that, Noah was offered a spot at Ole Miss to be the starter, and along with Judkins, this may be one of the most explosive backfields in college football. Now meet Nate, the 6'3", left-handed gunslinger. See, Nate may not have the sweeter athleticism of Noah, but Nate is a natural-born thrower of the football. Nate's inspiration growing up was Tom Brady, which is why he rocks the number 12 and takes major pride in his efficiency and team league ability. While Noah was always a multi-sport athlete and track runner, Nate was a film junkie, working football 12 months a year trying to become the best QB in the nation for as long as he can remember. Nate being the more complete QB received offers from every school you can imagine, and that's why he picked Georgia. His prospect comparisons come out of high school were Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow. So teaming up with the best tight end in the nation, along with Lab McConkey always waiting to make a big play, this Georgia team was an early season favorite. We are excited to follow these two brothers through their journeys, through the tough challenges the SEC has to face. Let's see how they'll handle it. First game of my collegiate career, man, coach calls my number as we're down early against LSU. I'm able to pick up about a gain of seven yards to make it second and three. Then on second and three, I give it to Judkins, man, the premier back. He's able to pick up a block and another block, and he's down the sideline, man. And just like that, me for seven, Judkins for 33. That's how explosive this backfield can be. As coach calls Judkins' number again, I hit him on the screen. He's able to make a man miss and get it to a second and one. Then on second and one, coach calls my number on the draw. Just go ahead and pick up the first down. And as you see, this drive has been all me and Judkins. As he's able to make a man miss, he's to the outside, and he's able to make it a second and inches. And then on second and inches, man, we go ahead and give it to him once again. Just go ahead and pick up the first down. We are in striking distance inside the 10. Then on first and goal from the 10, I'm dropping back. And I see Watkins wide open for my first passing touchdown of the season, man. It was all my legs, all Judkins' legs. And then we were able to get Jordan Watkins wide open as the defense was expecting to run that close. Now here, next drive, we pick it up. It's a tie game. Judkins able to get another first and 10 as he's averaging over 10 yards a carry for four for 56. Now first and 10, I drop back. I see Jordan Watkins again. We're able to pick up another first down. I'm throwing three for three. We hand it off to Judkins. He's able to break another tackle and make a man miss for about a gain of 14. He is cooking. Like I said, this is the best running back in the NCAA first and 10 we're able to hit our tight end Heath he's down the sideline but he's eventually going to get caught first and goal from the five man you guys know what time it is I am dropping back I'm looking to throw on a third and goal after two runs that went nowhere I'm trying to pick it up with my legs nothing doing then on fourth and goal coach actually makes us go for it and they call a gap blitz we can't account for him and everyone is locked up in the man coverage and that will actually be a turnover on downs as we couldn't capitalize on the great field position First and 10 for the next drive. Coach calls a play action. I'm scrambling. I don't see anything. I just go up and pick up the first down myself. And after two runs, it was third and two. And I hit Judkins wide open in the flat to pick up the first down. He breaks a tackle. He makes a man miss. He makes another man miss. And just like that, man, we are in the red zone yet again as Judkins has been taking this game over. I'm dropping back to throwing another first and 10. I'm able to hit Wade in the seam, man. Perfect chest ball. My accuracy is a question, but not right there. And then we hit Judkins perfect wide open in the end zone on the flat route again. And just like that, man, take this lead on LSU. But unfortunately, they were able to score right before half so we are back down again first and 10 I'm able to hit Harris for another first down and then I'm dropping back again I'm looking I don't see anything so I just go ahead and pick up about again a fourth my legs after a handoff on second and six to make it third and one coach calls a read option I keep it for myself I do to the outside and I'm down the sideline as I'm able to pick up a first down as I have seven rushes for 43 yards and my legs have been killing LSU all game second and 10 after nothing doing on first down we give it to Judkins he's able to juke inside and pick up yet another first down as we're trying to score and take this lead in the third quarter second and nine I'm dropping back I'm looking to throw and we get a wheel route wide open to Jordan Watkins for his second touchdown of the game second touchdown of the season and just like that we have the lead once again on LSU man let's go LSU actually scores again man and I don't know what happened on kick return but we are at the one yard line and so this will probably be the last drive we have to take it all the way down the field 99 yards if we want any chance of winning this game man so on third and three early on I'm able to hit Wade for a first down he makes a tough catch to barely get the first down then on first and 10 again I'm looking I hit Harris as I'm just throwing bullet balls man I'm trying to show these people that I can put together a drive Judkins breaks the tackle and makes a man miss he's able to pick about 15 I'm dropping back 
I see our tight end wide open, man, as we're able to pick up another first down. And just like that, just in a few plays, we're across the 50. As this drive is looking perfect, I'm dropping back again on another first and 10, trying to complete the comeback. I don't see anything I like, so I scramble. I get it myself. I'm down the sideline to the 30, to the 20. I'm able to make a man miss, and I'm actually tackled down at the 15. And just like that, man, we are all the way down the field, and this game is not over. We're at least in field goal range. Here we give it to Judkins. Judkins able to pick up about a gain of four, maybe five. And then on second and six, I'm dropping back. I'm looking to throw. I see him slanting wide open across the field as we get Harris for yet another touchdown and just like that man could we complete the two-minute drill and unfortunately our defense could not get a stop and even though I played almost as perfect as you can for my first week especially against a good team in LSU Jaden Daniels went down and called game as you see he played pretty well as well and amen um even though we start off 0-1 I, I feel like there's great things to come. This episode up in the second quarter as we're down 7-0, struggling heavy against FSU. Man, their defense has been locking us up all first quarter. I hand it off to Judkins. He's able to pick up some blocks, and then he's able to run through the defender for a first down. And then on first and 10, coach calls a read option, and then this defensive tackle breaks a double-team block, man, to make it a second and 14. And on second and 14, I'm under center. I'm looking. I don't see anything open, and I get sacked again, man. So on third and 13, I'm looking to throw before this drive ends, and I get sacked a third time. As, man, our offensive line has been getting dominated by this FSU D-line all game, man. We pick it back up after our defense got a great stop, and look at it. We're getting sacked yet again. It's just like I don't even have enough time to think. As on second and 18, I'm dropping back. I'm looking to throw, and I try to hit my tight end, but I get sacked again. And then on third and 17, I'm dropping back again, and we're finally able to hit Jordan Watkins. But unfortunately, we ran out of timeouts getting sacked over and over again, so we're not even going to get to get any points as we get shut out the whole first half, and FSU has been dominating us this game as our defense gets another stop so we pick it back up in the red zone actually in the beginning of the third quarter it's a play action I'm scrambling I'm looking to throw I see my receiver wide open my boy Wade is able to get the first down we are finally in striking distance man knocking on the door but after unsuccessful runs man we get sacked yet again and we cannot capitalize on the good field position and that's really been the story of this game as we pick it up in the fourth quarter as we couldn't do anything the whole third quarter but our defense gets another stop in good field position and there's just nothing open man these FSU DBs have been blinking in our receivers all game. Our run game hasn't been able to get going as that big D tackle on FSU has just been breaking all types of double teams. So right here, man, we really need seven as if our defense can somehow get another stop. We're right back in this game. And on second and three, I find Judkins to go ahead and get the first and goal. And on first and goal from the six, we give it to Judkins again. He's trying to find a crease. And as you see, they're just shedding every block. And on second and goal, I'm looking to throw. I'm getting hit as I throw. I just get rid of the ball, man, as we just have no time. And on third and goal, we're trying to get our touchdown. And we finally find Caden as we're able to get our first seven of the game and even though we have not been performing well our defense has kept us in it and just like that we are one stop away from being able to take the lead let's go but unfortunately FSU takes almost all of the time and all of our timeouts and we are down six with 30 seconds left I take a prayer Jordan Watkins able to make a catch but we do not get out of bounds so I spike it and we only have about one play left man on the last play of the game I try to throw it up and of course it's incomplete so we take yet another loss to go to 0-2 and we just did not play that good man FSU's defense was all over us and our struggles continue as we pick it up in the second quarter down 14-0 to Texas A&M man and this is a con conference game against the A&M team that we're supposed to beat this is one of their first years in the SEC and us being down 14-0 and just getting sacked over and over again as the struggles continue is not a good look as third and 13 though we are able to pick up a first down then on first and 10 I'm able to give it to Judkins we really want to score this drive man we got to get back in this game as with only a minute 40 left to half this game could get ugly real bad being down 14-0 as we're able to give it to Judkins again make it a second and goal and on second and goal I'm looking I'm able to hit Caden on the out route and just like that we are only down seven and we really need to lock in man as if we want any chance of making the playoffs at the end of the season we need to start winning some games and we need to start winning some games now we pick it up with about 24 seconds left man our defense was able to get a stop so we're trying to get some points before half i throw an incompletion almost an interception but on second and 10 i'm looking i see my receiver wide open and i miss the throw and those are throws i have to make man as on third and 10 i get a retry and i'm able to put the ball right on the money as we're able to burn a timeout but we still do need one more completion for the field goal and instead of throwing it i just take it myself make a man miss and I'm able to get us a field goal as now we are only down four by one score and we pick it back up in the third as our defense got another stop and I'm able to give it to Judkins on the speed option I already picked up the first down but hey man just pitch it see if we can make something crazy happen on first and 10 I'm looking I don't see anything I launch it down the field I see Caden wide open in a busted coverage
Cambridge. And just like that, man, we're knocking on the door to score once again as we really need this seven to take the lead. First and goal, Coast calls a tight end screen, and we're just able to pick up a few yards to make it about a second and four. And now second and four, we give it to Judkins. He's trying to pick up some blocks, and he falls down to the two. And then on third and goal from the two, I'm looking. I don't see anything, and I actually get sacked. So we're only able to get three, man. Not being able to capitalize on the big plays has really been the theme for this season. But on the third and 13, after our defense gets another stop, I'm able to hit my boy Caden for another first down. And then on first and 10, I go ahead and scramble with my legs to make it a second and one. On second and one, we just give it to Judkins to pick up the first down. And then on first and 10 again, we give it to him again, man, trying to establish that run on probably our final drive of this game. Second and three, we try to get a play action boot, and our left tackle does not seal the edge. So I run straight into a defender. And on third and 17, I'm blasted as I throw, but I'm able to hit Jordan Watkins for a first down. And just like that, man, we're knocking on the door to score. I'm able to hit Harris in the chest. First and 10, we're able to give it to Judkins yet again. He gets tackled for a short game, but on second and eight, we don't give up on the run as we're able to pick up about three more yards. And on third and five, I'm dropping back. I'm able to hit my boy Dayton Wade wide open on the sideline for a first down. Then first and goal after we make them burn their first time out and their second right here. And on second and goal, Coach calls a tight end screen. We're just trying to pick up as many yards as possible, but nothing doing. And on third and goal, I'm dropping back. I'm looking to throw. I really want a touchdown. I don't see anything. I'm scrambling. I'm trying to pick up something and I don't see anything. So really what I did here was I just took up as much time as possible, but made sure we got three. I even centered it for our kicker. So as long as our defense doesn't choke, <sighs> We'll win this game as we end up losing to Texas A&M by one. I did all I can do. We called the pass play. There was nothing open, so I ran around, wasted time. They had no timeouts, man. We thought that we were going to be able to escape with this one, but Connor Wayman drives all the way down the field and gets three. We can't dwell on that as now we have UCLA, man, and starting out 0-3, man, was probably the worst way this season could have started as two of the three, we really were in the position to win all the way up until the very end, and it would be easy to just blame it on our defense for not getting that last stop, but to be fair, a lot of these games, especially that FSU game, our offense just has not been performing how it's supposed to be. There are a lot of times where we just can't take advantage of good field position or we just make a bad mistake or I can't make the big throw to get us in the end zone and we just stall out a lot of drives and that leads us to having a lot of close games and we just got to fix that if we're going to want any shot at the playoffs this year as 0-3 we're going to need to win most to all of our games if we even want a chance at sniffing the playoff as Dayton Wade scores here but it is a 12-team playoff so like I said we do have a chance man but we're going to need to lock in as we still do have some tough SEC games left like the fact that we have three losses and we still haven't played teams like Bama. We still haven't even played my brother over there at Georgia. We have a lot of work to do, man, but I'm not giving up on the season. None of us are giving up on the season as Judkins gets a big run to get us into the red zone. And if we score here, we can go up two possessions against UCLA in a much needed win. We need this win bad. And right here off the play action, we're able to hit our tight end Heath wide open. After that, we would pick up in the fourth quarter as after that, we kind of stalled out. You see, we got two field goals, but our defense got two good stops already in scoring distance, and we just couldn't do anything with it, which like I said, has been the story of this season. And just like that, that we are in a close game only up by six and we need to go ahead and ice this game away so i'm able to pick up another first down and then on first and 10 nothing's doing on the run so we run it again on second and 11 we're able to pick up the first down same thing nothing on first and 10 so on another second and 11 i hit caden on wide open on the drag he's able to pick up a first down so then first and 10 from the 15 we go ahead and give it to bentley he's able to make a cut on the stretch play and pick up another first down so just like that we're knocking on the door on second and goal we run read option their linebacker gets a perfect block shed and hits me, and I actually fumble, but we're able to recover it. And on third and goal, man, we need this score to ice this game away. And I'm able to find Trey Harris. He's able to hold on to a tough catch, and just like that, man, they have no timeouts. That's going to go ahead and ice this game as they aren't able to score. We get the ball back, and we just kneel it out. 284, three touchdowns. This was the performance we needed to go ahead and put us in the right direction. We are one in three, and we need to go ahead and keep this momentum going against Oklahoma. But as you see, we weren't able to as we jump in near halftime and we're down zero to 10 men offense is struggling yet again as I've already even thrown an interception in this game so here man I'm able to hit Dayton Wade and we're just trying to get some points before half trying to make this a game I'm looking I don't see anything I take it myself I'm able to make a man miss and slide pick up the first down and we call a timeout we're trying to pick up some yards to make this field goal easier I'm able to hit Caden he actually breaks a tackle and falls into the end zone so we complete the perfect two minute drill as we were struggling this whole half but that was a perfect drive to put us only down three headed into halftime. 
We pick it up in the second half, and we get sacked, man. And on a third and 13, I'm dropping back. I'm looking to throw, and we're able to find our boy Jordan Watkins wide open to pick up the first down. Then on first and 10, we give it to Judkins on the stretch. He's able to fall forward and pick up yet another first down, and our offense looks like it's clicking. As we give it to Judkins again, he's able to pick up about a gain of 12 on another run. So Judkins, go ahead and take a break. We give it to Bentley. Bentley is able to pick up about five. Then on second and five, we get sacked. And on third and 14, I'm looking. I'm trying to keep the drive going, and I actually miss a wide open throw so we do actually get the tie game but that's what I mean man I've been killing drives myself as my accuracy has really been hurting us in some situations as that right there could have been seven and on second and eight I'm sacked so on a third and 16 I'm dropping back I'm looking to throw and I find Dayton Wade wide open and I finally make a perfect throw it said poor accuracy but it was right on the money Dayton Wade goes ahead and takes a bow as we take the lead here in Oklahoma and after our defense gets another stop man we're here late in the fourth with the lead and with one first down we can go ahead and end this game as they're burning all their timeouts and we can really just kick three but on third and seven I'm scrambling I don't see anything I'm directing traffic I give it to Caden he's able to fall four for the final first down and we're able to kneel it out as we pick up our second win in a row as we're picking up some much needed momentum to move on to two and three as we have a tough LSU right now who headed into this week has one of the top 10 defenses in the nation so we have our work cut out for us as our offense has been struggling so on second and six I'm able to hit my boy Jordan Watkins to make it a third and one we just go ahead and give it to our boy Judkins who's not able to pick it up but coach actually calls it on the fourth and inches says that we need to make some big plays if we're going to want to win this game and speaking of big plays man I miss my receiver Dayton Wade wide open on that crosser and on second and 10 I miss another pass wasn't really open but still I'm off the mark but here I'm able to hit my boy Cade he's able to pick up about 30 yards it's just like that we're already in field goal range against LSU first and 10 inside the red zone I'm dropping back I'm looking to throw I go ahead and hit my boy Heath our tight end wide open and he's able to pick up some yards to get up inside the 15 as on first and 10 coach calls a play action I'm scrambling I'm looking to throw. I see my tight end get behind the coverage. They lose him, and my boy Caden is able to get in the, in the end zone. As Caden has been one of our premier receivers this season, man, as he's racking up the touchdowns, racking up the yards in this game. As we take the lead against LSU 7 0, and we pick it back up in the second quarter, go ahead and give it to Judkins. He's able to pick up about six yards. And on second and four, we go ahead and give it to him again. On third and three, I'm dropping back. I'm looking to throw. I see my boy Dayton wide open, and he's able to go ahead and pick up the first down to keep this drive going. And on first and 10, we go ahead and call a little screen to my boy Jordan Watkins to pick up about four yards yards on second and six I'm dropping back I'm looking to throw I have my boy wide open on the play action Dayton Wade as he's able to make a man miss and get us down inside the 15 yet again and we're in scoring distance against this LSU defense as here on first and 10 I just try to get as many yards as possible and on second and eight I'm looking to throw and I don't see anything so I just throw it away on third and eight I'm dropping back trying to keep the drive going I'm scrambling I don't see anything but I see my boy Jordan Watkins wide open at the end of the play and just like that we're up 14 though and our offense is clicking on all cylinders right now as we're looking really good against one of the best defenses in the nation up 7 14 with about two minutes left until halftime we're trying to score man make it a two possession game and i get hit as i throw and i throw a terrible interception man and if i didn't get hit if the line could have just held up it would have been a completion and now i have an extra interception but let's just be happy that our defense got another stop as we're able to pick up that first down and we do get sacked as our line is continuing to mess up but here on second and 17 i'm looking to throw and i try to throw it up to jordan watkins and they swat it so on third and 17 i'm trying to keep it going and I see my boy Caden as he comes up big yet again and just like that we're already in field goal range and I see Judkins streak and I try to hit him but my guard actually gives up right before I'm able to throw the ball so now on third and 14 we could have had a touchdown I try to hit Caden and he actually catches it as we're able to spike and kick three we pick it back up here in the fourth and the reason you see the score like this is because LSU has basically been shut down the whole game and so have we man after that first half we didn't do anything in the third our defense just got two good stops and we got two field goals that was it our offense offense has really been struggling as here we're trying to go ahead and score and put this game away as I get sacked and I actually get hurt man and I'm gonna be out for the rest of this game as I limp off to the sideline I go I go in I get diagnosed and thankfully it's just a sprain I'm only out for this week as we have undefeated USC and we are we're, we're on a streak right now man if we can keep this win streak going and then go and be an undefeated team we'll definitely be in the playoff hunt and it won't even be a question as these few wins have been some wins against some good teams and if we can come in here and beat Caleb Williams in his house man not only will we have a lot of confidence not only will we be on a four game win streak but we will actually have a chance at being ranked but we do 
pick it up down 7-0 and as you see our first run is minus six and on second and 16 i'm looking to throw and we're hit right as we throw man we're getting popped and that's the theme of this game man their defense was playing tough as you see i get hit as i throw and we're forced to punt and that's the theme three and outs as here on the first and 10 we get a holding call we're down 14 oh it's first and 18 i try to pick up some yards to make it a second and six on second and six you go ahead and give it to judkins he gets hit right at the line of scrimmage so on a third and five we're trying to pick up the first down i just go ahead and hit judkins just to keep the chains going and we have to fight for every single yard this game as usc's defense did not come playing man as you see second and 10 i had to throw the ball away i'm dropping back i'm looking to throw and i miss a wide open date and wade and that could have been a touchdown as those are the throws that i need to make if we're gonna have any chance at being a good team this year i make up four by hitting caden right there to pick up the first down and on first and 10 i'm dropping back to throw again i don't see anything so i just go ahead and pick up the first down myself and i'm able to slide into the enemy territory and just like that man we're knocking on the door as judkins breaks the tackle he's able to make it a second and one then on second and one we try to call a triple option and they're just all over it then on third and four i try to force a tight throw but he just gets drilled and he's unable to make the catch so we're forced to take three and just like that man we are down three to 14 in the second quarter but right here we're able to hit dayton wade he's able to pick up a good amount of yards and on second and three we call a play action i'm rolling out and i miss another wide open throw as i don't know if it's me being on the road or me playing caleb but i'm just nervous as we get sacked and i really messed up that drive missing that throw as they were able to get three man so now just like that we are down by 14 with a minute left so here in the two minute drill we're trying to get some points i'm able to hit my tight end heath to pick up the first down then on first and 10 i'm looking i'm looking i'm able to hit my boy harris and he's able to get out of bounds so just like that we're in scoring position and we still have all three timeouts man so right here i'm able to hit judkins he's able to get out of bounds so on a second and two i'm dropping back i'm looking to throw and i see the tight end and i miss another throw man and that could have been another touchdown as here on third and two i'm dropping back i don't see anything so i just take it myself and i go ahead and get out of bounds so we still have all three timeouts at about the 20 yard line and i try to hit dayton on that streak and i miss another throw as i don't know what's going on with me but right here i hit our tight end wolf in the numbers this time finally but he can't hold on to it and i miss another wide open tight end as i'm starting to frustrate myself with all these missed throws and we have to take another three as to be honest we're really right in this game if i can just make those throws like i said those tough throws we could really be in this game or even have the lead so here we're trying to score man we're trying to get seven at least as we've been knocking on the door so many times judkins gets a big run to get us inside the 15 then first and 10 from the 15 we give it to judkins again he's able to pick about a gain in five then on second and five i'm looking and i throw a bad pick as there was pressure in my face and i just completely missed fire trying to fit the drag into the window and like man i'm the reason that we are losing this game as our defense keeps getting stops usc only has 17 points and if we count all the missed throws i have as i miss another one we could be up in this game getting ready to take a two possession lead as i finally hit a big throw right there to dayton to put us in scoring position and on first and goal i'm dropping back i'm looking for someone i don't see anything so i just throw it away and on second and goal we give it to judkins trying to make it a third and short and on third and about five i'm dropping back to throw trying to get on the board and i hit judkins he's able to outrun the linebacker and get into the end zone and literally like i said just like that it's a one score game if i could have just been on point we would be up right now let's see if our defense can get another stop and they cannot and you can't even be mad at them as they've been playing good defense all game all we can do is try to answer back so i'm scrambling i'm looking i'm able to hit my tight end heath and i make a perfect throw on the run as i'm starting to lock in now and right before the end of the third quarter i hit a perfect lob pass to my boy caden and just like that it's first and goal and i'm scrambling i'm looking i don't see anything so i take it in myself man i dive into the end zone and just like that man like I said, we finally locked in, had a perfect drive, and we are only down one score. Unfortunately, USC does get another three, but we are still only down eight, so we can still go and tie this game, man. We're trying to drive down the field. We give it to Judkins, back-to-back -back plays. He's able to pick up the first down and get out of bounds, man. We do have about five minutes left with all three timeouts, so time isn't really a factor. We go ahead and give it to Judkins again. He's able to make a man miss and pick up a face mask, so just like that, we're across the 50. I tried to hit Caden, but he drops it on a tough hit, and on second and 10, I'm dropping back. I'm looking. I hit my boy in the chest and he drops it as well so on third and ten man we need this first down our center gets ran over i'm scrambling and we don't get it so on fourth and five man we need this to keep the game going and i get hit as i throw as we get no protection and i throw another interception and that will basically end this game man as we could not get it going against usc and to be honest our defense played a good game our offense didn't play that bad there were people open 
it was me, man. I had a bad completion percentage. I missed a lot of big throws. To be honest, man, if we wanted any chance at turning this season around, it all started with me. And our real challenge comes next week when we play my brother at it's Georgia. It's finally that time, man. I've had this game marked on my calendar all season long. I know my brother has too. I'm on my way to the airport as we have to go on the road to play my brother and his Bulldogs at Georgia. Obviously, they are favored in this game, as besides that one L they took in the final seconds, they've been killing it this season. And my brother Nate is leading the best offense in the nation so far, and obviously Georgia's defense isn't no joke either. But what I can say is ever since me and my brother stopped being on the same teams in elementary school, every time we play against each other, it's a movie, man. Literally, our senior years of high school last year, he beat me 28-35 to on a game-winning drive. We both played perfect games, but he just got the ball last. The country is riding us off, but they don't know the Noah that comes to play when his brother is on the other side, always thinking he's better than him. Let's see what happens. I'm locked in. We have my brother Noah tomorrow at home, man, and the talk on campus is that it's going to be another easy win, but I've been trying to tell my friends, especially my teammates though, that this is no regular game, which is why we're out here getting in some extra skelly work. See, for some reason, man, whenever me and Noah play, all bets are off. To be honest, he's never actually beaten me, but he always plays at a crazy level. See, for some reason, Noah thinks that I think that I'm better than him, and he uses that as like his chip on his shoulder to go that extra mile and find that extra gear. Obviously, the competitor in me says I'm better, but the truth is, I've always been a little jealous of how much better of a true athlete Noah is. For me, I was only good at football, but Noah, he would be one of the best players on the team in anything he picked up, and to be honest, now that he's solely focused on being a quarterback, this rivalry is going to headline the SEC for the next two to three years. Let's begin chapter one. Ladies and gentlemen, the first chapter starts here as Nate is going to start off with the ball and he's going to get it to Brock Bowers to pick up a first down. He's dropping back. He's looking to throw. He's able to hit Lab McConkey in the slot. He's able to make a man miss. He breaks a few tackles. He gets out the bunch and he's able to pick up a first down. And just like that, man, Georgia is already knocking on the door across the 50. Nate dropping back to throw. He's able to hit Ra Ra Thomas in the seam. Just like that, Georgia is inside the 20 yard line, man, in the red zone. They are just driving down this field with ease as they're going to flip it to Lad. He's just trying to pick up as many yards as he can. He's able to break a tackle and he picks up about a gain of four then on second and six they give it to Brock Bowers he only picks up one yard after a hard hit and on third and five Nate Nash is dropping back to throw and he hits his man Jack Saint for the first touchdown as Georgia drives straight down the field and strikes first in this SEC matchup man let's see how Noah responds man first and ten they flip it to Judkins he's going nowhere Georgia's defense is all over that option game second and 12 play action Noah he's scrambling he's looking to throw he doesn't see anything he just tries to get what he can and this Georgia defense looks real tough as on third and ten Noah's dropping back to throw He's able to hit all reliable Caden to pick up that first down as now Ole Miss is at the 50 yard line first and 10 they give it off to Judkins he's trying to make something happen he lowers his shoulder breaks a tackle to make it a second and two second and two they give it to him again just trying to pick up the first down he's able to get a little wiggly pick up that first down as Ole Miss is now knocking on the door right outside the red zone at the 38 yard line Noah's dropping back pressure in his face fade away call him Kobe he's able to hit Dayton Wade right on the numbers what a throw by Noah Nash as he looks locked in as Judkins is able to pick up about a gain of 12 keep the drive going they're at the 14 yard line they're knocking on the door they're trying to get this seven. Judkins breaks the tackle, but there's just too many Georgia defenders. It's on second and 12 with the play action. Georgia gets caught. Caden is wide open, and he's able to score as Ole Miss goes right back down and answers back. Boys, we have a ball game. Let's get it. First and 10. Georgia. Nate dropping back to throw. He's looking. He sees Lab McConkey wide open, man, for about a gain of 20. Then on first and 10, Nate's dropping back yet again. He's got that pro reads activated. He sees that man, Oscar Delp. He's able to make a catch, and just like that, Georgia's already back in the red zone as they're at the 28-yard line. They give it off to Robinson for his first touch of the day nothing doing man that's why they're not handing off that big old fat number zero he's locking shit up second and ten Nate's right tackle gets molested and now it's third and 20 man this old Miss defense is going crazy third and 20 Nate's dropping back trying to keep the drive alive and he's hit as he throws again as this old Miss D line makes a stand and if Georgia can make this field goal they will be up 10 to 7 as it's up and it is good how will you respond Noah Nash old Miss ball first and 10 they hand it off to Judkins he's trying to find some space but Georgia's run defense has been pretty good so far as on second and 11 Noah tries to keep it himself but there's just no space third and seven Noah's dropping back to throw he needs this to stay on the field will he stay on the field yes Dayton Wade's wide open over the middle of the field as Noah hits him right in the numbers and just like that old miss is just across the 50 yet again as Noah's throwing four for four read option right here nothing doing Georgia is not letting them run the ball they're saying Noah you're going to have to beat us with your arm as he's dropping back to throw he misses a throw and that's what they're saying right there with the pressure third and 15 can Noah convert he does man he keeps Ole Miss on the field after converting another third 
Jordan Longman first down as he hits his tight end Heath. First and 10, they give it to Judkins. He makes a man miss. He picks up a block, and he's down the sideline. Touchdown Ole Miss. Judkins is able to get all the way into the end zone off of that stretch play. He picked up the perfect blocks, and just like that, Ole Miss is leading in this game 14 to 10. First and 10, Nate Nash dropping back. He's looking to throw. Ra Ra was open, but he got hit as he threw. So on second and 10, they just give it to Brock Bowers on the screen. He picks up some blocks in the alley. He lowers his shoulder. He's able to make it a third and one. And on third and one, they just flip it to Ladd. He puts his foot in the ground. He just goes ahead and picks up the first down. Don't want to do too much. Just make sure you get that yard. First and 10, Nate's dropping back off the play action. He's able to hit Oscar Delp in the flat for about a gain of four. Second and six. They go ahead and hand it off to Robinson. He's actually able to find a little bit of space. Third and two, they need two yards to convert. Obviously, because it's third and two, they hit Oscar Delp. First and 10, they move the chains. They're at the 50-yard line. Bullseye. And speaking of bullseye, man, Brock Bowers riding the numbers first and 10. George is already back in the red zone as Nate's dropping back yet again. He's looking to throw. He's able to, oh my goodness, that man made an amazing play. He actually almost threw a pick. I thought he was going to be able to hit that curl route, but they throw it to Ladd on, on the bubble, man, to make it third and six. Third and six. They need this to convert. They're able to hit Oscar Delp again, man, as he lowers his shoulder. He gets Georgia inside the 13, and Oscar Delp has been cooking. As on first and 10, Nate tries to throw a lob pass to Rara. He's unable to win the jump ball. Second and 10, they do a little shovel pass to Rara. He's running. He's trying to pick up some yards. Nothing really doing. Third and four, man. They're looking. Nate's looking to throw. He's trying to get this touchdown, and he sees his man, Oscar Delp, again as he carried this drive. Georgia strikes again, and they take the lead in this game. Noah Nash, I'll ask you again, how will you respond? It's 14-17, to 17, about to be the two-minute warning. He scrambles on a first and 20 after a holding call. He makes it a second and inches. He gives it to Judkin to pick up the first down, keep the chains moving. Then on first and 10, they ran it again. Nothing was doing. Second and nine, second and nine. They give it to Judkins for a third time in a row. He makes it a third and two. And on third and two, Noah's able to hit Heath, and he's able to get out of bounds as they're trying to score before halftime with about a minute left. First and 10, Noah's dropping back to throw. He doesn't see anything he likes, so he's just going to go slide, make it a second and four, and then Ole Miss is going to use their first timeout. Second and four, Noah's dropping back to throw. He's looking. He's scrambling. He doesn't see anything. He goes ahead and picks up the first down and gets out of bounds just like that. Ole Miss, man, in striking distance with about 45 seconds left. Noah's dropping back to throw. Doesn't see anything again. He's scrambling. Fade away throw to Heath. Wide open in the end zone as look at that throw. Pressure in his face. Noah Nash makes an incredible throw to take the lead for Ole Miss headed into halftime, but there is 40 seconds left. Nate dropping back to throw. He's able to hit Rara Thomas. Rara gets out of bounds. Georgia does have all three timeouts. As Nate hits Brock Bowers in the seam, he gets hit hard, but he's able to hold on to the ball. Georgia does use one of those timeouts. Nate dropping back, doesn't see anything, just throws it away with the pressure in his face. Second and 10, Nate's dropping back yet again. He's able to hit Brock Bowers in the seam yet again. Georgia's probably going to use one of those other timeouts. Now Georgia's in striking distance. Nate's dropping back to throw. He makes a dangerous throw over the middle, but it actually makes it to Brock Bowers. As that's like his third or fourth catch. He has been carrying this drive for them as Nate's dropping back to throw. He's able to hit Milton. Milton gets out of bounds. Then with 11 seconds left, Georgia's actually going to run another play. Nate is able to hit Jack Saint, but he gets tackled inbounds as he could not outrun the defender, and that is going to end the half for Georgia as they had poor time management. They risked it. They try to get a touchdown, and Jack Saint gets tackled inbounds, but they can't dwell on that as you see Noah Nash coming out the half getting shifty first and 10 as they take the lead, and with this drive, they could go up by two possessions potentially. Noah, play action. He's dropping back to throw. Misses his tight end, Wolf wide open as there goes the accuracy concerns for Noah, but they're not going to do on it as they give it to Judkins. He's able to make a man miss. He's down the sideline. He puts on a spin move and jukes out three Georgia defenders as he's across the 40, and Judkins has been cooking this game. Nine rushes for 80 yards and a touchdown. Let's see how they continue first and 10. Read option. Now Noah Nash gets his legs involved. He makes a man miss. He makes another man miss, and just like that, man, Judkins and Noah got Ole Miss all the way down the field just off of their legs alone. First and 10 from the 24. Noah's dropping back to throw. He gets hit from behind, and that actually could have almost been an interception. Pause on the hit from behind, but on third and 12, he's able to hit Heath, and just like that, Ole Miss is at the three-yard line, trying to make this a two-possession game. First and goal, they give it to Judkins. Nowhere to go. Second and goal from the five. Noah's gonna scramble. He sees Dayton Wade wide open, and he's able to hold on to the ball as he gets hit, and just like that, Ole Miss is up two possessions in this game, where they were thought to be written off, and Nate Nash, how will you respond now? As first and ten, he gives it to Oscar Delp. Second and two, play action. He's able to hit Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers gets Georgia across the 50. First and 10 from the 45. Play action. Nate Nash dropping back to throw. He's looking. He doesn't see anything. He tries to give it to his running back. And look at that man playing pass coverage and stopping the run. Number zero is a demon. Second and 10. Screen to Brock Bowers. He's able to pick up some blocks in the alley. We've seen that one before. First and 10. Nate tries to hit Brock. But actually, old Mrs. cornerback has blanket coverage. They give each other some mutual respect. As Brock has been cooking. But man to man right there. That cornerback did win that rep. Second and 10. He's able to hit Lab McConkey. Wide open in the seam to make it a first and 
goal from the 10. First and goal, Georgia. Nate Nash dropping back. He's looking to throw. He doesn't see anything. He's just going to go ahead and throw it away. Second and goal. Nate's dropping back again. He's looking to throw. He needs this touchdown. He doesn't see anything. He just scrambles. He picks up as much as he can to make it a third and manageable. On third and six, he's dropping back to throw. And who is it? It's that man again, Brock Bowers, wide open for a touchdown. And Georgia goes for two as well. And who is it again? Brock Bowers, as just like that, Georgia is only down three points. And they're only one stop away from getting this lead back. Let's see what their defense does as actually on the kickoff, the kick returner muffed it and had to recover it at the one yard line. So Noah Nash is backed up all the way and on second and 10 he does hit his receiver but they're not able to hang on through tough coverage on third and 10 he has Caden wide open but he misses the throw with that pressure in his face so Ole Miss is actually going to have to punt and Nate has a chance to take the lead right back here first and 10 Nate's dropping back to throw he's looking he's able to hit Rob Raw on the out route first and 10 again Nate's dropping back to throw he's looking he's able to hit Brock Bowers he's able to break a tackle he makes it a second and inches and then on second and inches Nate's dropping back to throw he's able to hit Milton Milton gets hit and still is able to hold on to the ball Oh, what a catch as on first and 10 they just throw a bubble to Ra Ra. he just tries to pick up as many yards as possible as headed into the fourth quarter Georgia is down three second and four play action well Lab McConkie is wide open miss how can you allow that as now Georgia is all the way down at the one trying to take this lead right back they try to go QB sneak nothing doing as Ole Miss's line has been tearing it up all game then on third and goal they need a touchdown they need seven they finally get it in with Milton as Georgia has taken the lead in the fourth quarter but you know this game is not over yet yet as there's still over eight minutes and even though Kendall is strutting into the end zone the real question is number two how will you respond man you are down four against your brother he hands it off to Judkins he breaks a tackle he falls forward he's able to pick up about again a seven second and three play action Noah scrambling he's looking to throw he's able to hit Heath as he gets tackled out of bounds for a first down then on first and ten yet again he gives it to Judkins nowhere to run as he's going to make it a second and eight second and eight there's a play action Noah dropping back to throw he's able to hit Trey Harris dead in the chest first and ten as just like like that old miss is already back in the red zone yet again first and 10 stretch play to Judkins he gets around the edge he's able to make a man miss to make it about a second and three second and three Noah play action he's dropping back to throw he's he's sensing pressure he's scrambling out of the pocket and he's unable to hit his tight end on that cross body throw you can't really blame him there's pressure in his face he was on the run as here on third and three he's able to hit Dayton Wade but there's actually I believe on the field a holding call which is gonna bring this play back to make it a third and long for old miss third and 13 now as now they have to respond and they almost throw an interception and you can't really help but to blame the O-line there as pending this kick that barely goes through. Ole Miss is down one but they did convert that third down if that lineman just would have kept his hands to himself Noah could have possibly taken the game leading touchdown but here Nate Nash gets sacked on second and 24. He hits Ra Ra Thomas right in the chest on that defender to make it a first down first and 10. Now George is really just trying to chew clock as there's only four minutes left in this game but Robinson ran too close to out of bounds but he was able to pick up about 15 then they sub in Kendall Milton he's able to run for about a pick up of five second and five play action Nate Nash he's scrambling he's looking to throw he hits Lab McConkie on the big play but he drops it as Nate made a perfect throw but Lad just couldn't hold on through the tough coverage and here he is able to hold on but that makes it a fourth and two and Georgia's actually gonna have to punt but they try to kick the deep field goal but that's just not in their kicker's bag as he doinks it off the post and just like that I'm gonna ask one more time how will you respond Noah Nash as now he has a chance to potentially win this game in Georgia against one of the best teams in the SEC. Second and 10. Noah's dropping back to throw. He's looking. He hits his boy Heath as just like that. Ole Miss is already in field goal range and we have to see if either Ole Miss is going to try to go for seven or if Georgia's going to start using their timeouts. First and 10. Noah's dropping back to throw. He doesn't see anything. He scrambles for about a gain of 15 as he has been killing Georgia with his legs all game. He has 11 rushes for 73 yards and now from the 15 first and 10 he's able to hit Judkins out the backfield but he gets tackled immediately second and three Ole Miss actually calls a timeout as they want seven here they're able to get the first and goal and now Georgia's gonna unfortunately have to use that timeout as they got the first down here now Ole Miss is just in straight two clock mode they give it to Bentley second and goal they really want to score they're trying to pound it in they go QB sneak they do not get the touchdown but hey Georgia has to use their last timeout here on third and goal they give it to Judkins he's trying to get in the end zone he doesn't get in as Georgia makes a stand but as you see they ran out of timeouts Noah Nash did what he had to do gave it 
to his kicker on a silver platter. What is that, like a seven-yard field goal? And with that, that last second is going to tick out on the kickoff. And Noah Nash completed the impossible as his first time ever beating his brother is a 34-32 to walk-off money drive win in Georgia, who up until this point was the best team in the SEC. And now people have to really watch out for Ole Miss as they did take some losses early. But if Noah can continue to perform like this, perform within his role, as you see, Nate had the more star-studded performance, as you would call it. But Noah did his job. He got his team the win. Judkins performed. All the stars came out. This was a star-studded fireworks special. And I cannot wait to see how the SEC unfolds now that Ole Miss is officially on the map with this W. Man, I'm feeling great after that win against my brother in Georgia, man. And here we are back at home against NC State. I'm not going to lie to y'all, boys. This game was a blowout, man. If we can compete with Georgia, NC State does not belong on the same field as us. I'm just going to show y'all, boys, some highlights. And then we're just going to go ahead and get on to the next week as this season is coming to an end and we are making that playoff push that went against georgia is big but our next two games after this we have nine and two tennessee and then right after that our season ender man the final game of the season we do have to play bama so these next few games are going to be important they're going to be essential to us making this playoff and to be honest i'm feeling really confident man like i said georgia was the number one team in the sec leading up to that game so if we can beat them man especially me beating my brother for the first time i feel like we can beat anybody and as you see this nc state team just has no answers man as i'm able to hit my boy dayton wade wide open for another touchdown at this point it's 27 to 10 and then judkins is just gonna pour it on he's gonna take it all the way to the end zone for about a gain of 40 and just like that man we went ahead and dropped 30 on nc state but that's that's expected man we gotta win games like this next week we have tennessee and we really gotta win this game and to be honest i came in this game expecting a dog fight but it was really much of the same man as you see 7 0 our defense gotta stop we got the ball back again i'm scrambling i'm picking up as many yards as i can and this second half of the season i'm really making sure that i've been taking advantage of my legs you see what i'm saying i gotta make these defenders pay i gotta show them that not only can i throw the ball but i can move man so here we're all the way down here first and goal i'm looking to throw and my boy judkins is wide open off the play action and as you boys see man we're just pouring it on they can't even get in the end zone as i hit my boys Ari franklin wide open in the end zone man and then right here with this stroke of good luck we score yet again the very next drive and we beat tennessee by 30 man this was supposed to be our one of our toughest games they were nine and two and we came here and we handled our business at home and this is our final game of the season versus a tough bama team man they got kool-aid they have a tough defense and this game man we're pretty much a lock for the playoffs after beating georgia and tennessee but if we can beat bama then we're actually going to end up being one of the highest seeds in the league coming down to this last game of the season so here man we gotta win we gotta close out this game but it's gonna be tough bama is no slouch bama is no pushover here i'm able to hit dayton wade he gets a face mask so not only do we get the first down, but we're inside the 20. And then right here, I'm able to hit my boy Caden. And just like that, we strike first here in Bama to take an early lead. And man, I've just been so proud of how my team has performed all season long. We started out 0-3. Everyone thought that we were in a rebuild phase. We we're going to need to go and recruit some people or something like that. But we locked in midseason and we have not lost we were 0-3, and we have not lost since then, man, as I've been clicking, all of my teammates have been clicking. As you see, we stopped Bama again, and just like that, we're about to score again. I hit my boy Caden on the RPO. He picks up about eight yards, and on a second and two, coach calls a little play action. I'm running to the left. I'm looking. I don't see anything, so I'm just going to go ahead and take it myself, pick up the first with my legs, and just like that, man, we're knocking on the door, trying to score again. We give it to Judkins. He's able to pick up about seven yards, and on a second and three, I'm dropping back to throw. I'm looking, and I get hit as I throw, but I'm able to hit my boy Jordan Watkins, and he dances into the end zone as we take this lead Bama does finally score but look at Judkins man he makes a man miss he breaks a tackle and just like that man we are almost at the 40 knocking on the door right outside the red zone yet again we have been cooking this game our offense has been firing on all cylinders second and seven I'm dropping back to throw I don't see anything I outrun this linebacker pick up the first down and get out of bounds to avoid the hit on first and 10 we go a little read option I keep it again nothing really doing just pick up a solid three yards and here we go ahead and give it to Judkins he's able to get outside but he gets slammed and on third and eight I'm dropping back to throw no one's open our right guard gets bum rushed and I I have to throw the ball away so we just get three but then bama gets another seven so just like that we're only up three we have about 30 seconds left until half let's see if we can get this two minute drill we have all three timeouts i'm dropping back to throw i'm able to hit my boy heath and just like that man we're already across the 50 we use a timeout 26 seconds left i see the man-to-man -man coverage Kaden beats his man and not only does he beat his man but he gets us all the way into the end zone and just like that in one play we're able to drive all the way down the field and pick up seven to take a two score lead before half against bama man last game of the season 
season and our offense looks the best it's been all year as we make this playoff push. Let's go, man. Let's finish out this game. End up in the second half, man, where we do also get the ball. So if we can score here and go up 17, man, this will probably be game over. As Judkins makes a man miss with the outside juke, he breaks another tackle. And just like that, man, we're already across the 50 again as our offense is looking unstoppable right now. Play action after the big run, and I do fumble, but it's okay. We recover it, but we're going to have to take three. But Bama doesn't score. We get another stop. So we are up 13 with the chance to go up even more points in this game. I'm dropping back. I'm looking to throw, and I miss my boy Harris wide open. But here on second and 10, I'm trying to make up for it. I don't see anything I like, so I just go ahead and take it myself and slide. Then on third and four, we go with the little play action. I'm scrambling. I don't see anything, so I'm just rolling out. But then I see my boy late, and I'm able to hit my boy Jordan Watkins wide open in the back of the end zone. Perfect throw on the run, man, to end this game. As you see, they were able to score on the third and inches. We see one first down. We get it. I fumble, and they actually do get another seven, but as you see, they're going to have to use all their timeouts. It's not going to matter. We beat Georgia. We beat Bama. We beat Tennessee. The SEC in my eyes is ours. We're going to get the second seed due to our losses that we took at the beginning of the season, but I can't wait for the playoffs, man. Let's see how it for the playoffs, and I'm making sure all our guys are on point for this playoff push. Man, we start off a little slow, but we haven't lost since we played USC, and I truly feel like we are the best team in the SEC right now. Of course, the bracket doesn't say so, and we're going to have to play some pretty tough games, but I believe if we want to win a national championship, I'm willing to do whatever it takes, and I know my boys are ready too, and I really think that we can do this, man. Let's get it. Man, we got Colorado first. We got to watch out for Travis on defense, and that offense is no joke either. But here, man, first and 10, we give it to Judkins. Nothing doing. Second and eight, we give it to him. He gets around the outside, man. He's going to make a few men miss. And just like that, man, we're almost to the 50. We hand it off to Judkins again on another first and 10. Trying to establish our run game, man. These playoffs, we got to make sure we're using both of our backs. We're using my legs. We got to make sure that we are using all aspects of this offense. Colorado's defense is no joke, man. They actually finished top five in the NCAA this season. So we need to make sure that we're on point as I get his. I throw there and we're forced to punt and just like that Colorado takes a three-point lead we have to go ahead and try to score here second and 12 I'm dropping back I'm looking to throw I'm able to hit my boy Trey Harris he's able to get some separation from his man and we're almost across the 50 first and 10 I give it off to Judkins he's looking for some space he gets dipped but he's able to pick up about a gain of eight we give it to him again on the second and two he's able to pick up the first down and we're across the 40 then on first and 10 I'm dropping back I'm looking to throw and I see my boy Jordan Watkins wide open and then Travis Hunter grabs his face mask so we're going to take it from about the three and then Caden is able to beat his man on that out route as Caden Caden has been cooking in the red zone all season long, and we take the lead against Colorado early on. They did get three, so we are only up one, but if we score here and get the ball at half and potentially score again, we can take a two-score lead against Colorado, man. So here we're able to hit Caden. He's able to pick up some big yards. We try to hand it off to Judkins, and nothing is doing. So on second and 10, I'm dropping back. I'm looking to throw. I just throw it in the back. He'll get rid of it. Nothing really doing on third and six. We need this conversion if we want to try to score some points. I'm able to hit my boy Dayton Wade wide open over the middle of the field, and just like that, man, we're across the 20, knocking on the door, trying to score. I'm able to hit Caden right in the chest, and we are at the one-yard line, man. First and goal with about a minute left. I'm looking to throw and who is it Caden but he actually drops it and we get a holding call so I'm forced to take it myself and then on the second and goal I just fall into the end zone and we complete the two minute drill man and we also get the ball to start the second half so besides our first drive our offense has really been clicking on all cylinders as we've had some two pretty easy drives here we pick it up on a third and six in the third quarter I'm scrambling out of the pocket I'm able to hit my boy Trey Harris wide open as he's able to make somebody fall and he falls down at the one yard line and then first and goal from the one coach calls my number and I fall short so second and goal we call another read option and I get scooped on third and goal we do a little play action I'm scrambling and we just got locked up so we're forced to take three but with that drive we're able to get a two score lead but then they did go and get seven so now we're only up by three in the fourth quarter man put away drive right here if we can score right here we can go up by double digits and I almost threw an interception here on third and 11 though I'm able to hit Judkins on the cut they tried to man up a linebacker to him and he's just too quick for that man first and 10 we're in the red zone I'm dropping back I'm looking to throw my boy Jordan Watkins able to beat the man man on Travis Hunter then on second and three they're playing press coverage so I just take it myself I'm trying to get in that end zone and I dive man putting my body on the line like I told y'all boys I'm gonna need to pull out all the stops if we're gonna win a natty as we take a two score lead on Colorado here in the fourth quarter and then our defense was actually able to get a stop in their territory so not only are we up two possessions but we can actually go up a third here and we're right outside the red zone so on first and ten I'm using my legs yet again as I have been cooking with these two rushing touchdowns and these 40 yards have been important as here on third and five we're trying to score and I miss my 
boy Trey Harris as he was open on that cut on Shiloh. Man, put your hand down. You got cooked. I made a bad throw. And they went and got seven. So just like that, man, we're only up six. We just need one first down to win this game. And right here on second and 12, I try to get it myself. I fall forward. And on the third and two, I need to make a play. And we drop the ball and get a holding call, which they declined to make it fourth down. Coach tells us to go for it. And our right tackle gets cooked, man. As soon as we snap the ball, I couldn't even throw the drag. So they get another chance, but they're not going to be able to do anything with it. And we walk out of here with our first playoff win. But I can't be worried about that as we have Miami Hurricanes. And they were middle of the pack. They were a decent team. They were able to sneak into the playoff, man. And they actually won a game. So here, we can't take them lightly. We got to make sure we win this game. And we're already knocking on the door. And I'm able to get another rushing touchdown in this playoff. As our offense has just been cooking all second half of the season long, man. Like I said in the beginning of the video, ever since that loss to USC, our offense has been one of the best in the nation. As here, Judkins is going to make a couple men miss. And here on a second and 12, after I got sacked, I'm able to hit our third string running back, Jones, as everyone's going to need to make some plays this game. If we're going to win here on a play action, I'm looking to throw and I'm able to hit my boy Jordan Watkins wide open and he makes a man miss as he's able to get into the end zone. And just like that, man, we are up 14-0. Like I said, we are clicking on all cylinders and we are really making this push to the national championship as our defense gets yet another stop. And after a sack and an incompletion on third and 15, I try to go up to Jordan Watkins and I overthrow him. So here next drive, we get another stop. And on second and five, coach calls a speed option. I just keep it myself. And then here on the first and 10, I give it to Judkins. He's able to get around the edge, make a man miss and fall, make it a second and three. On second and three, I'm dropping back, looking to throw. Caden gets wide open off the play action. How many times have we seen that this season? And just like that, we're up 21-0 on Miami in this playoff game. They do finally score, but here I'm able to hit Dayton Wade wide open. And then we're almost about to cross the 50 on a third and five after two runs. I'm able to hit Jordan Watkins across the middle. He's able to beat his man and make two men miss and break a tackle. And we're already across the 25. I'm dropping back to throw on this first and 10. Caden gets a step on his man. And not only does he catch the ball, but he's able to run in the end zone for yet another touchdown in this playoff as Caden has been cooking like I've been telling y'all here. 28 to seven, man. This game is really over with only eight minutes left, but we got to score. Well, let's go ahead and put it away with about seven minutes left. I'm dropping back from the 20 and I throw a bad interception is to be honest, man, I was feeling myself. I just wanted another touchdown on the board, but it's okay. As we get this last first down and Miami's forced to use the rest of their timeouts, man, with one more first down, we can go ahead and end this game as a two minute warning is approaching. And I hit Dayton Wade. He makes a tough catch. And with that, man, we can just go ahead and salt out this game. But since we're so close, we're going to go ahead and try and score. We're going to keep it on the ground all four plays so we can go ahead and run out this clock. And I go ahead and dive into the end zone to put an exclamation point on this game for yet another rushing touchdown as we are at home and we took care of Miami with ease as we just look dominant on that game but we got to play the team that beat Georgia my brother the number one team in the SEC we got to play Florida State man as this is the best team in the ACC they're actually a favorite they're supposed to go on to win the national championship is what everyone is saying because like I said they have the best defense in the nation and for some reason Jordan Travis is on steroids and he scores every single possession man so we got to be on our A game if we're going to want to go to the national championship and I do want to go to the national championship I know our team does too as Judkins is going to get around the outside as we pick this game up in the second quarter as y'all boys saw it was literally just stop after stop it was a defensive first half and guess who scores first my boy Caden as like I said red zone threat of the year with another touchdown and of course Jordan Travis decides to score right as we score but we're able to hit Heath and we have a minute left until half so we're trying to complete this two-minute drill we need these points if we're going to win this game I'm able to hit Dane Wade wide open man and just like that we're in scoring position we have two timeouts 37 seconds left I'm able to hit Dane Wade yet again we go ahead and burn one more timeout and we have 30 seconds left man I want a touchdown I need this seven we need to win this game I take it myself for yet another rushing touchdown this playoff as I'm establishing myself as one of the best dual threats in this league my legs have never been questioned but this late season push man my arm has been on fire as well and we are just cooking on offense as five seconds left there's nothing and I'm able to hit Trey Harris perfect sideline ball and we get three with five seconds left before half so just like that we're up two possessions with the ball and then look at Judkins he gets us a powerful run on a first and 20 after a holding call and just like that man after this run we're right behind the 50 knocking on the door trying to score make this a three possession game and look at Caden man Caden is a man amongst boys in this playoff run as he wants this natty just as bad as I do and on second and seven he beats his man and is wide open and I hit him perfectly in the chest and just like that we're up three scores on FSU we need this natty man 24 to 10 coach calls a little read option on second and eight I make a man miss and I juke back outside to make it a third and inches on third and inches we just go ahead and give it to Quinshawn he's able to pick up the first down after making a man miss and now it's the start of the fourth quarter we're trying to put this game away we're up by 14 I hit my boy Caden for a first down we're already 
across the 50 yet again. Second and 12, Coach just calls a play action. I'm able to hit my boy Jordan Watkins on the run. We're already across the 20, and I'm dropping back. I'm looking to throw. I pump fake, but then I decide to fire it in there, and I throw another perfect ball. Trey Harris makes a perfect toe tap. We are up three possessions on FSU, man, as our defense has actually showed up today. Usually, Jordan Travis averages like 30 points a game whenever you play him. Our defense has held him to 10, and right here, as you see inside the two-minute warning, they're not going to call any more timeouts, so we're just going to go ahead and be able to kneel this one, and with that last knee, we are headed to the national championship, man. No one thought we would make it this far. Everyone counted us out early on when we were 0-3. When we lost to USC, they said that we couldn't beat any comp, but we're playing for the game, and, and as you see, my brother Nate is actually able to win the Heisman, and look at Offensive Player of the Year. It goes to Brock Bowers, but in this order, it's Lad, Nate, myself, and Quinn Sean, man. We were just cooking all season long. As you see, the Defensive Player of the Year goes to Florida State, as that defense was just crazy all season long. I get best quarterback since they gave my brother the Heisman, and then Quinn Sean gets best running back. He was the best running back by far, and as you see, Lad McConkey, the best receiver. Nate threw for 5,800 yards, 47 touchdowns, and 14 interceptions, and I threw for 4,341 touchdowns and seven interceptions, so I actually had a better touchdown to interception ratio, but of course, Nate just lights it up every single week. Quinn Sean, by far the best running back. He didn't have the most touchdowns, but he had the most yards, and y'all know he had the most impact, and Lad McConkey and Brock Bowers, both with 1,700 yards, 100 receptions, and 15 touchdowns as they ran the college football, but man, it is time for the national championship as we have Bo Nix in Oregon, and when I tell y'all I have never been more locked in in my life man i have the snickers back plate because i'm hungry for this national championship man let's go we pick it up we're down 3-0 third and six as y'all boys see i make three men miss i got the dark visor no one can see my eyes i'm completely locked in this game man i need this natty third and four in the same drive i'm dropping back i'm looking to throw i'm able to hit my boy Dayton wade he makes a tough catch then on second and six after we give it to judkins we just fall forward on the read option make it a third and manageable then on third and two i'm looking to throw i try to fit it into a tight window to jordan watkins and they actually call an offensive pass interference on that when he got hit and then our guard gets trampled so we have to punt on a fourth and 21 then here we have to punt again after that defender makes that great play on third and three but here I throw an absolute rocket on the run to Heath and we are down 6-0 with a minute left until half we need to score man we need to go ahead and get some points on the board our defense has not been playing bad but our offense has been stagnant this whole half so here man we need these points I'm able to hit my board Jordan Watkins to get us down inside the two yard line and we really need this touchdown as we go ahead and spike that ball I'm a third seconds left I'm scrambling I'm looking to throw I see my tight end and the ball hits him in the head so on third and goal man we need this touchdown I'm looking I'm scrambling out of the pocket again and I see my boy Trey Harris wide open in the back of the end zone as we complete yet another two minute drill this season to take the lead going into halftime and Oregon does get the ball first but our defense gets a stop so here we're already past midfield and I do almost throw a pick so we have to punt we're forced to take three right there but then here on this third and seven we're able to pick up this first down so we're knocking on the door again trying to score trying to take a two possession lead and Dayton Wade beats his man on the deep post as he just absolutely fries him. I throw a perfect ball to hit him in stride, man. And just like that, we're up two possessions on Oregon, but they go and get seven. So just like that, it's a tie game. Then here, as you see on second and eight, I get hit as I throw. So third and eight, I'm looking. I don't see anything. So I literally just have to throw it away and we have to punt. And when we get the ball back, we're actually down 21 to 17 with only four minutes left. So this could potentially be, man, the last drive of this season. And I'm not going to be the reason we get off the field. I know that that was a bad throw, but here on third and 10, I'm dropping back and I'm able to hit my boy Jordan Watkins in the seam and we're already across the 50 with less than four minutes left man we need to take this lead we need seven so I'm just gonna go ahead and get it myself as I pick up about a gain of 20 on the rush man I am locked in we need this seven I will not be the reason we don't win this game it's here on first and ten I'm gonna take it again I'm gonna pick up about seven yards on second and three we just go ahead and pick up the first down we give it to Judkins to let the two minute warning hit now on the other side of the two minute warning I don't see anything I get hit as I throw on a second and ten I'm looking I'm trying to find somebody open and I see my man Trey Harris wide open as he gets another touchdown in this playoff and we take the lead late against Oregon as this could potentially be the game winning touchdown with only two minutes left but they actually go down and score so with about 40 seconds left man the question on everyone's mind how will I respond as Dayton Wade is wide open busted coverage and he's gonna take it all the way to the crib as we score the go ahead touchdown with only 30 seconds left man we need our defense to hold we need a stop as pending the extra point we will be up three in the national championship and as you boys see, we get the stop. We take this last knee, man. And with that being said, Noah Nash is your 2024 national champion, man. 
Ole Miss, they brought in Noah. They took a chance on him. No one wanted to take a chance on him. They wanted him to play receiver. He started out struggling, and he took his team all the way to the big game. And not only did he take them there, man, they won it. So going into next season, we're going to have to ask, man, who is the better brother, Noah or Nate? As Nate did win the Heisman, but Noah just shocked the world. 